and two auditions yeah. uh, this week. Yeah. Both for techie guys. Techie guys. Well, yeah. They're both were software engineers, surprisingly. Not racists? No. And there was no not, no, not Confederate soldier tech nope. guys. I was. The, I heard the Confederate Army needed tech guys. That's what I heard. You, that's all the auditions were for. You didn't have anything involving like butt plugs. No. I oh, a, then explain this. Yeah, I was a I was a dad in one, um, and the other one was uh, uh, just kind of a more of a tech dad nerd, tech guy you know? and then tech guy nerd. That's something, I, especially er, earlier in my uh, career here, I got cast as the young techie guy. Now I'm the dad techie guy. <laughs> <laughs> and then racist. Josh! Hey, welcome back to our Stephen Rex. I'm Corbin. He's a racist tech guy. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter for more juicy content. Thank you, Radio Sports on Patreon. Follow us official Twitter account. Subscribe and hit that like button. Yeah, do it. Do Ooh. it. I dare you. I dare you. I while you're at it, dog. While you're at it, you. rub your bare butt on the screen so I can touch it. Yeah. <laughs> you need to shower. What are you doing? Today we got a little informational video. Okay. This is uh, when India was an island. When India was an island, I lived in a hut. When Indian was an island, Can you stop? <laughs> I had to wear my hat. <laughs> uh, and this is from PBS Eons. Um, and when so India was an island, I think it was more of like it, pre, like Pangaea time. It was uh, still connected during Pangaea. There's other parts that. Oh, it thinks it broke off from the from Africa and then was floating and then pushed itself up into. Okay, cool. Uh, I think it's this should be those. exhilarating for about ten seconds. Uh, and I think that's probably one of the reasons why it's such a. Diverse topog, you know, that's what the kids call it, topography nowadays. That's what the kids call it, topog. Yeah, topog. Yeah, I think that's what the tech dads call it. Oh yeah, yeah. That's probably why I get cast topog. as the tech dad. Spectrum business yeah. works with. Oh good, shut the fuck up, Spectrum. Worst goddamn internet. It's the only one. There's no other internet provider out here. Uh, it's same where we are. It's awful. And it consistently, we're out right now. We won't be back up for another forty-five days. Oh, good. Another ad. Great ads. Ads are fine. Stay Sometimes. tuned for the end of the episode no, for love that guy. a mammoth no. announcement. Mammoth announcement. We need to talk about the biggest breakup of all time. Yes, the breakup of the supercontinent Pangaea. Oh. Oh, Around 200 million Affleck. years ago, the ground split open and the crack grew until it reached all the way Your across the supercontinent, Great eventually flood. flooding <coughs> the seawater. This Noah. seaway connected two ancient oceans together, separating Laurasia in the north from Gondwana in the south. Didn't you used to date a girl named Laurasia? And it also separated the all up. the plants and animals that lived on each. This was a major fork in the road of evolution. Life became divided into two different groups, but they, they, they didn't forks? lose touch forever. The subcontinent of India became a sort of island messenger between the two halves of the globe, breaking away from Gondwana and traveling 9,000 kilometers across the sea to collide with Eurasia. This journey took 35 million years, but the Same. plants and animals that went along if for I'm the ride mistaken, when it was India 34. became an island eventually reunited with their long lost northern relatives. Kind of. Because a lot can happen over that much time. And ultimately, when India smashed back into Asia, it really just it traded one mountains. form of evolutionary Some really tall isolation ones. for another. That's what happens if you take two soft things and you push them together. When the breakup it comes up started, like Gondwana was made up made. of what is now South horn. America, Africa, India, Antarctica, and Australia. Africa, Madagascar, and India were once neighbors. That is until sometime around 120 to 100 million oh, years crazy. ago, Madagascar. when a rift was formed, that that breaking sense, India actually. and Madagascar away from Africa and isolating all the Gondwanan plants and animals living there. Then, around 90 million years ago, Madagascar split off and India was basically on its own. Now, we know that island isolation often leads to unique evolution. Think of the Galapagos, or and Madagascar Rajnika. itself for that matter. This is allopatric speciation, where a physical barrier creates a separation that leads to new species. And during the Cretaceous period, the island of India was home to a bunch of animals that were suddenly cut off from the rest of the world. 
Everything from frogs, lizards, turtles, snakes, centipedes, and crocodiles, to plant-eating sauropods like the gigantic Janosaurus, and meat-eating theropods like the two-legged Indosuchus and Rajasaurus. Come up with better There were even name. early Larry. mammals like Gondwanatheres, an extinct group that looked kind of like big rodents. But Cretaceous life Capybara. on India wasn't all an island paradise, as the subcontinent was just beginning a wild tectonic ride. When it first broke away, it was traveling at around 5 centimeters per year. That's already pretty fast. Today, the average plate moves at around 1.5 centimeters. centimeters per year. And India was so fast because it's very thin, only 100 kilometers thick compared to other plates like Africa at 300 kilometers. The gigantic plume of hot material that had emerged from I'll the give mantle you a and caused the initial breakup of, of Gondwana had also melted rock off of India's base. And then, 80 million years ago, the plate accelerated to a sprint, moving at a rate of over 14 centimeters per year. This is because it was being pulled by two parallel subduction zones, where one plate slides beneath another and sinks into the mantle. One of these was in the middle of the Tethy Sea, and the other was along the Tethy? coastline of Laurasia. Because they both pulled in the same direction, like two people on the same side of a tug of war, this yanked India northward exceptionally fast. India then sped through different climates, putting pressure on the plants and animals to adapt to new conditions or perish. Around 67 million years ago, the plate began to slide over the reunion hotspot, fueled from below by a you massive a plume of magma. And the force of this plume beneath the Indian plate sped up its pace even more. It also triggered a massive well volcanic eruption known as the Deccan Traps. This was a flood basalt. Erupting lava literally flooded I the Earth's lava. surface. Yes, lava it poured out enough lava <laughs> to cover an estimated uh, no, 1.5 million distance, yeah. square oh. kilometers, an area the size of Mongolia. This it's amount of lava yeah. could fill the Great Lakes nearly 50 times over. Today, the remaining basalt still covers 15% of modern India. Oh, wow. And this volcano came at the worst possible time. Don't they all? Because one of the main eruptions lasted 700,000 years and began okay. just 300,000 to 400,000 years before the Earth was hit by the asteroid that led to the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction 66 million years ago. And while the Deccan Traps didn't cause this extinction, many scientists think they played a big role in worsening it. The eruption spewed out toxic Poisonous air. gases yeah. like mercury. <laughs> yeah. It also you don't released want to that aerosols in. that spread out in the atmosphere, reflecting sunlight and suddenly cooling the planet. But when these cleared, the carbon dioxide released by the same eruption also Oof. warmed the planet over the longer term. The temperature had come back down by the time the asteroid hit, but this roller coaster of climate meant that life was already under incredible stress. And in addition to feeling these global effects, life on the island of India also had to contend with lava flows and nearby volcanic gases. Living basically right on top of the Deccan Traps meant that the effects of the mass extinction were amplified. Nearly all vertebrates were wiped off the subcontinent. The few survivors included frogs, snakes, and cecilians, the worm-shaped amphibians. Ooh. All of these can burrow into the ground for protection, so that might have been the key to surviving both a massive volcano and an asteroid impact. After the dust settled, there's about a 10 million year gap in our understanding. Paleontologists just haven't found many fossils from this time in India. So we pick up the story again during the Eocene, around 55 million years ago. That's odd. And the fossils from this time make it clear that the Guessing island of the India lava. played an important role in the evolution of placental mammals. But where did these mammals come from in the first place? What a weird One looking idea animal. is that they could have originated in Gondwana and survived the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction in India, known as the Out of India hypothesis. I was right in the Gulf. But most scientists disagree. See, India broke away before mammals with placentas evolved. Independence. And since the vast oh, majority of modern breakaway. mammals, including all modern Indian mammals, have placentas, the ancestors of these mammals would need to have somehow made it to the island of India. So researchers think that despite being in the middle of the Tethy Sea at the time, it's more likely that India wasn't completely isolated. 
as the subcontinent neared the Asian mainland, but before it had fully docked, some animals were able to migrate from the mainland to India. They likely docking. did this by hitching a ride on floating objects or jumping between smaller islands like stepping stones. And once these mammals made it, ancient India was home to some big evolutionary milestones. In fact, both horses and whales can trace their roots back there. For a long time, the evolutionary history of ungulates, mammals with hooves, wasn't well understood. See, fossils of both groups of ungulates, animal. those with an even number of toes and those with an odd number, appear suddenly across multiple continents. So where they came from in the first place has been a big question for a long time. And a study from 2014 describing a 54.5 million Bob, year old fossil keys. of Cambatherium in India provided an interesting clue. This was a genus of four-legged herbivores that was an ancestor to the order of Parasodactyla, the odd-toed ungulates. Today, Great this band. order includes horses and rhinoceros. Never heard the odd toad. So this <laughs> entire order could have originated Your in child. India as it was nearing a collision with Asia. But what about the even-toed ungulates, called yeah. artiodactyls? I've been thinking this that for weeks. This group includes pigs, giraffes, and camels, as well as whales and dolphins known as cetaceans, who evolved from land-dwelling mammals. Well, I love and dolphin Indohias toes. And Indohyus was one of these mammals. Indohyus looked kind of like a deer with a long nose and thin limbs like with rat. hooves. Yeah, that but don't it was look like around a deer. the size of a cat. Oh, its fossils have been found almost exclusively in India and Pakistan, suggesting this is where cetaceans made their transition from land to sea during the Eocene. And each stage of this transition can be seen in Indian fossils. That is, until 49 million years ago, when the Protocetids, a group of extinct cetaceans, evolved. Then suddenly I've their fossils appear all over the world. I've learned 15 new words today. Cetaceans had gained the ability to spread out animals. from the island across the world's ocean. Get, uh, Their ability to swim crocodile. gave them a head start <laughs> in terms of spreading out from India. But the collision with Asia provided a burst of new land-based species in both directions. India fully established yeah, a connection seven to the mainland around 45 million is years there, ago, which is when we see plants and animals be begin water. migrating oh, both out of and into most of it's the underwater. continent. Yeah. One of these groups was the Dipterocarps, a family of trees that can grow to over 50 meters tall and today Ugh. dominate Southeast Asian rainforests. They originated in Gondwana during the mid Cretaceous and were carried across the sea by India. And some animals, like the ungulates, originally came from Asia but continued their evolution on the island of India before dispersing out again. Others like the blind snakes, centipedes, and Sicilians first originated on Gondwana, survived the mass extinction, and diversified in India before spreading out across Asia after a very long ferry ride. They ended and the up rate in at Miami. which species migrated back and forth from India to Asia continued to increase until 15 million years ago. Because while India's isolation and journey across the sea was a unique tectonic moment that led to the evolution of equally unique animals, it wouldn't be the last time geologic forces isolated India. Its collision with the Asia British. built the tallest mountains in the world, the Himalayas. And just like the oceans, Himalayas. mountains create barriers between groups of species, allowing them to evolve in isolation. But like how you. the Himalayas changed the world and is a story for another became. episode. Yeah. Oh, nice. That was you learned about fifteen thousand insanely informative. Yeah, well, it's, and it's well just put a, together. It's just a bunch of scientists saying, yeah. "All right, this is what happened a long time We're ago." We're like, ready. We'll say scientific stuff, and none of you can prove it because you're not as scientific as us. Goddamn right. Did you hear? Recently, there was a discovery of uh, dinosaur footprints that were absolute identical matches in terms of age, size, everything. But one was in South America and the other one was in Africa mm. because they were once yeah. connected. Um, that's always crazy because it's hard to conceptualize. Like he was saying it was moving at, what, 10 centimeters a year? Like, yeah. And that was a fast pace. Right. Uh, and they're still moving. Like, they're all I'm, moving. I'm pretty sure they say in like a couple million years, California will also be an island yeah, they I think. said that eventually because our plate uh, uh, uh if you're if you are uh west of the san andreas that plate is moving northwest mm -hmm. so in i don't know how many Million, millions yeah. or billions of years the eventuality would be that la could be directly across from san francisco yeah yeah that's crazy yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's such a such a strange thing but i mean 
It, it makes a lot of sense when you when you think about how diverse India's topography is. Yeah. And if it was so close to Madagascar back in the day. Right. <laughs> I mean, they do kind of um, similar rainforest vibes in, in parts of it. Yeah. Um, and then the isolation of not only being an island and then now the having the largest mountain range yeah. in the world isolate you uh your animals for I'm which makes sense if it was going at that speed which was almost double the normal speed of tectonic plates it explains the impact and the constant press to push yeah. the himalayas up it's amazing it's absolutely insane to think how old everything is and that's just ours and we're young yeah <laughs> compared to like all the goddamn universe is. <laughs> it, remind, it reminds me of one of the first days that I was driving a Drani through L.A. And I pointed out something on the Hollywood freeway about how old the bridge was. And she burst out laughing. <laughs> I said, I know, I know. That's old for Los Angeles. I know your city's older than my country. <laughs> yes, it is. It is. Calcutta is older than America. Uh, well, technically, India is only like 50 years old, right? That's true. That's true. Did yeah. it exist before 1947? The debate is still yes. ongoing. Yes, that is. Uh, most people agree. Yeah. India is only like 80. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, have fun with your young history, India. <laughs> <laughs> We're like 200 and some years old. Oh, okay, yeah. So we... Maybe one day you'll catch up. In the meantime, Will Mustard. And I mean, isn't it like, uh, I think humans started in the um, Africa, right? But it was, yeah. India was right around that. I mean, language is the oldest currently, right? Is, uh, well, it makes sense. Model? Yeah, it makes sense. I, I don't Almost know that recorded, that recorded yeah, they from archaeological. That's hard to say. I mean, you can't say before that. Obviously, I know you don't have no proof. <laughs> no, and just because you don't have archaeological evidence of Doesn't other languages, there. right? Exactly. I mean, clearly, clearly, one of the uh, but it's oldest a, languages ever in the history of the world is uh, English. Yeah, but yeah, that but, but that, we speak, but that you can prove. It's a joke. I believe like we've seen. Many yeah, videos, right? it's, it's Tamil, <laughs> and then I think Ireland or Scotland also has really old. Records of um, yeah. people slash languages. That's what's so cool about going to places like that. If you look at any of the places outside of America. You know, it's because we destroyed them all. Yeah, they're they're just the, the, the age of things. You can walk places that people have been walking on for literally millennia. You can do that here, but... Uh, <laughs> well, they, uh, and part of this was how the Native Americans actually got here was from yeah. Russia. Yeah, and there used to be a land bridge. We're actually really darn close if you consider the states of the United States and the proximity to Russia. Alaska's really, really close to However, the most eastern tip of Russia. We bought it for like sixty nine cents. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's kind of insane. You know what? You know what the Louisiana purchase was? I think, yeah, <laughs> it's like, like fifteen million dollars. <laughs> fifteen million dollars was. I mean, per the, back then, obviously, it doubled a, the size of America. A lot, but uh, yeah, back there, yeah. Uh, but that was very informative, uh, yeah, it's, and I liked. The, I mean, it's they, PBS. They showed stuff underwater, and they had underwater sounds. Yeah. How did the um, how did the cameraman get all that footage? Well, probably Nikon, because I think that goes back to fifty three thousand BC. Yeah, they probably had a GoPro. Yeah, uh, that mm. was probably a little bit later. That was in the crustacean period. Um. You know, the, the insane thing, I mean, there's so many things about the universe, right? But the fact that one of the reasons I think we will never encounter any alien life and have never and will never. Disagree. Uh, because the universe is Horribly. so insanely large and so insanely old. That's what you think. And I 100% I believe they're out there. But they could be millennia light years away from us and so like if we're looking <laughs> if somebody is looking at us if they have the technology to look at us they're looking at us millions of years ago well that presupposes that they're stuck within the that's true time space continuum and the quantum physics of our existence that's and true. I, I i don't make that presupposition <laughs> Why would you assume they're ahead of us? They could be behind us. Yeah, well, that's tr very true. Uh, or, you know, just blobs. Stephanie read this uh, fantastic book uh, that I want to read now. Um, it's a, The Life and Times of Grizzly Adams. It's about the same guy who wrote The Martian. I'm not about the same guy. The guy who wrote The Martian. The guy who book. wrote The Martian that became the film? Yes. Okay. Wrote another sci-fi book. Um, 
she made her dad read it too, and it was, it's it's this real sci-fi kind of uh, the sun is being eaten by uh, some type of fungi, and so, is his name Randy? No, but he uh, so it, the the star is dying, and so the, they're mm. gonna die because mm. the sun's gonna mm. be dead. Yeah, and so. Just